Before moving on, I just want to mention a thing or two about the ES6 error functions. While they are really useful in many cases, you also have to be a bit cautious with them. Let's take the example from the previous lecture and see what happens if we change the full name method to an error function. So I'll just change the syntax here and I'll add an arrow there, like so. Now we suddenly see undefined undefined being displayed on the page instead of my name. That's because error functions are bound to the parent context and therefore this will not refer to the view instance as you would expect. Let's actually see this by logging this to the console. So I'll just write console.log and this. So let's open up the browser's inspector. I'll just clear this out and I'll run the code once again. As we can see, this refers to the window object, which is not really what we expected. That's why there are no first name or last name properties available to us in that context. In comparison, let's see what is logged when we use a normal function as before. So I'll just revert this back to a normal function and clear out the console and run the code again. Now we see the view instance being output as we would have expected in the first place. So the moral of the story is that you should not try to use error functions on view instance properties where view tries to bind this to the view instance itself. There are still times where you can use error functions with all their benefits. For instance, if you assign a function to a variable within one of your view instances methods, then you can access this within the error function and it would point to the view instance as you would expect. Just be aware of where you use these error functions. And if you experience some strange behavior with this not pointing to what you expect, then it might be related to error functions. That's just something to be aware of.